any children. Oh, and hold on tight to all of your belongings. If anything falls out of the vehicle, unfortunately we can't stop to get it. Oh, hold on tight. If anything happens to fall off, just let me know. Yeah, I don't know if you guys look up, you'll see an animal spotting right up above. Yeah. And then I'll show you all the animals we have out here on the reserve. You might not be able to see all of them, but we usually have pretty good luck. Let's see what we can find out here. Well, over on the left, I see some of our forest antelopes. So that auburn colored one on the left with those horns, that is the bongo. And then the, the next one, that larger gray one without the horns, that's a greater kudu. Oh, and then if you guys look over on the right hand side, that back fence there, you'll see our friend the okapi. Because of those stripes on the okapi, they're often thought to be related to zebras, but they're actually a member of the giraffe family. Oh, we also have this really large black and white bird hanging out in the water on the right hand side. Now that is a saddle built stork. That saddle built stork usually stand up to five feet tall and have wingspans that can grow up to nine feet wide. The cool thing about those stork is that they don't have any vocal cords, so they can't vocalize at all. Instead, they'll communicate by rattling their beaks at each other. Oh, and if you guys look right across the water on your left, you'll see one of our black rhinos laying against that wall there. Uh, black rhinos usually weigh about 3,000 pounds. They get charged at speeds of up to 35 miles per hour. Well, unfortunately, due to poaching, there's only about 5,000 left in the world. They're poached for their horns, which some think serve a medicinal purpose, but they're actually just made out of keratin. That's the same thing that your fingernails are made out of, so it's nothing too special there. Looks like we have one more of our saddle build storks over on the left. Now, a lot of the animals that live here in the forest really rely on the environment to help protect them from natural predators. That's why it's really important that we take care of the forest. One thing that you can do in your everyday life to help the forest is just to watch your usage of paper. Try not to use more than you need and try to recycle it whenever possible. We're going to be driving by the Saki River here. You guys are going to want to keep your eyes on the water, see if you can spot any hippos. I think I did see one just a little bit ahead, so keep going. A lot of times it's hard to get a good look at them because they spend most of their time underwater. I did see one on the right there, just below the surface. Oh, and then we have a few more over on the left-hand side as well. Looks like this is a small group of them sleeping. They're mostly nocturnal animals. They spend most of their days underneath the water. Helps keep them cool. They usually only come out of the water at night. That's their time to come out and start grazing on the grass. Those are herbivores, but they do have these really large teeth that they'll use to fend off any animals that come into their territory. They're very territorial animals. And these large gray birds hanging out on the island there to the left. Those are the pink back pelicans. Uh, pink back pelicans get that name because of the pink tint that comes onto their feathers during their mating season. Their wingspans can be up to nine feet wide. And unlike most other birds, they like to hunt cooperatively. Well, they'll work together, try to capture as many fish as they possibly can. in the River, and we're going to be heading into a totally new environment up ahead. All the animals, the salmon, <laughs> all the animals. Yeah, I see it. Bear. No, not bear. I see it. Now we're going to be approaching the savannah portion of the reserve up ahead. Now this is going to be home to some of Africa's most famous animals, so we should see some familiar looking faces out here today. 
Turn it around. Now up here we get a beautiful view of the reserve out ahead. Right now I'm not seeing too many animals from up here, but we're going to drive down there. Search every corner of the savannah, see who we can find out and about today. Oh, zebra! Definitely some animals out in the distance. But nothing too close to us right now. Yeah, that does happen from time to time. Animals that live out here on the savannah are free to roam as they please. So a lot of times they'll migrate to different areas of the savannah as the day goes on or as the weather changes. Looks like we've had some gray clouds rolling in, so might have some animals trying to hide, anticipating some weather. But we'll keep going for it. I see the zebra off on the right. We'll get a little bit better of a look at them once we circle around. So hold off on talking about them. Oh no, over on the left hand side. African wild dogs. Looks like there were a few walking around. There's a few sleeping in the den as well. No, African wild dogs are sometimes called the painted dogs. They are very cute. Each one of them has a unique coat pattern. That's how they tell each other apart. They hang out in packs of about 5 to 15 dogs, and they are a true family unit. If one of those dogs gets sick or injured, the rest of them will work together and nurse them up to help. Over on the left, let's see those large antelope there. Antelope. That's not a sable antelope. They like to use their large horns and theirs to spar with one another. Sometimes we'll knock, find them knocking into each other. Now, over on the left, we have one of our Harvard's mountain zebras. It's eating. Each of those zebras has a unique stripe pattern. Kind of think about them like fingerprints. Oh, we do get a great look at our little baby zebra over on the right hand side. Uh, he's about, I want to say, five weeks old right now. He's white, a little baby. They're white with black stripes. So when zebras are born, they're actually born with their legs at full length. So he's not going to get too much taller at this point. He's just going to fill out the torso area of his body. Here on the reserve, we have Hartman's Mountain Zebras. One thing that makes them different from others is that they have a skin fold that hangs down from their neck. It's called a dewlap. That dewlap improves their blood circulation. Helps them keep helps keep them cool out here in the warm sun. That's the Ancoli cattle. Those yeah, horns oh, can grow to be we'll up to six feet long in. from end to end. They look really Four. heavy, but they are somewhat light. Uh, uh, Looks like yeah. out on the right in the distance we have some wildebeest. And then we have those little brown antelopes. They kind of look like little s'mores. Those are the springbok. Uh, springbok are super athletic little animals. They're one of the fastest land animals in the world. They can run up to 55 miles per hour. They can also jump up six feet high into the air. So they could jump straight up into this truck if they really wanted to. Oh, and we have some Maasai giraffe. So I got a little bit of a better look on the left as well. Here on the reserve we have Maasai giraffe. You can tell them apart from others because of their regular coat pattern. Look how tall they are. Adults are usually about 18 to 20 feet tall and that makes them the tallest land animals in the world. They tend to spend most of their days eating. <laughs> Looks like we can find a few more of our younger ones over on the right hand side there. Yeah, I do too. Now they can eat for up to 20 hours each day. And they usually only sleep for about 30 minutes per day. I can too. I can too. I can eat for 20 oh, hours a day. Heading into elephant country next. I can eat for 20 hours. 
And I think I might be able to see one of our friends, friends already. But I got to sleep the other phone. <laughs> Now, first over here on the left, we'll see some natural monkeys there. And then over on the right, you can actually see one of our African elephants. Kind of poking out of the side there. And mantles are the largest species of monkeys in the world. We're gonna try to see if we can maybe get a little bit better of a look at that elephant. We'll see if we can get a good look from up here. We're in a little bit of a hard spot to see right now. Okay, look at him. There he go. Oh, here on the reserve, we have African elephants. And yeah, we know they're African elephants because of those large ears over there. They're much larger than the ears on Asian elephants. Now that one there is likely a male. We're going to guess that because he's on his own. Now once they reach maturity, male elephants tend to go off on their own. Whereas female elephants tend to stick with the larger herd. Well, we're still in elephant territory, so we'll, we'll keep going forward, see if we can spot a few more up ahead. Now, unfortunately, both mandrills and African elephants are facing some threats of habitat loss. And that's because their habitats are often mined for this metallic ore that's found in a lot of small electronic devices like cell phones or tablets. So something that we could all do to help these animals it's just to remember to recycle our old cell phones, old tablets, and the old electronic devices that you might have laying around the house. Oh, if you look to your left, you can see one of our younger elephants there. Oh, that is, and we call her baby Stella, but she's not so much of a baby anymore. She's about four to five years old. It's her more of a, more of a juvenile elephant. try to circle around these plants here so we can get a little bit better of a look at our friends up ahead. Oh, there's a great looking friend there on my left. Oh. Oh, elephants are the largest mammals in the world. You know, what if? Oh, uh, adults can grow to be up to 13 feet tall. What if the animal? Yeah, they can weigh up to 7 tons. What, 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 what if the animals came to high habitat and said, Oh, look at the humans. Look at them eat. You see what they eat? You see how they eat? Uh, no, they're so cute. A lot of times we find them flapping their ears back and forth. They like to do that to cool themselves down. A few different ways that they like to cool themselves down. They'll also throw dirt on themselves or throw water on themselves with their trunks. Now moving forward, we're going to be circling around Flamingo Island here. Uh, keep our eyes peeled over to the left hand side and look out for these little baby flamingo chicks. They are a bunch of little bright poof balls that are hanging out in there. And they are so cute. So these are the greater flamingo. As you can see, the little babies have little gray feathers. Uh, they start to turn pink as they get older. It usually takes them about two years before they fully turn pink. Oh. You can actually see some of the larger flamingos in there. They still have some gray feathers on them. Oh, you know, they're still pretty young. here until we can get clearance to go forward. Uh, 
these animals in their natural habitat. And uh, mm. just have you ever have you ever wondered if the animals would come see us? <laughs> and I know the habitat. We're like, oh, look at the humans. Only, only, only on Planet of the Apes. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, look at the humans. Eh? Oh, look at them eat. Oh, that's like, what they're doing. Forward, forward, slowly. <laughs> 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 that was a good one. Ten hours a day. <laughs> oh, over up ahead, we can see one of our friends up there. I'm not sure if anyone on the truck can see him quite yet. Oh, yeah. There's going to be one of our white rhinos. Once we can get clearance to make this turn here, we to see a, get a white, really good look at that. White rhino. Oh, and we'll also get a look at our little baby white rhino as well. Oh, I know. I look to the left hand side here. Closer, we're going to get closer upon it in just a few. Oh, white rhinos usually weigh about four to five thousand pounds, a few thousand more pounds than that oh black rhino we saw earlier. God. Oh, we can see this little baby up here. His name is Ranger. He's about seven months old right now. Oh, he's so cute. He was born at about 150 pounds. Now he's getting close to a thousand. Our ranger's been gaining about seven to nine pounds of weight every single day. But he's still got quite a bit of ways to go before he's the weight of an adult. <laughs> A lot of times we find white rhinos hanging out by these mud pits over here. We call them mud wallows. That's because white rhinos have really sensitive skin. So they can roll around in the mud. And it cools them down and it gives them a layer of protection from the sun. Kind of works like sunscreen for them. Oh, if you guys look up on that left-hand side by that first tree there, you'll see one of our cheetahs laying down. Yeah, right there. No, 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 it's, no, it's, it's not Cheetos. It's, it's a cheetah. Okay. <laughs> we know he, we know he be on the Cheetos. We know he on the Cheeto, baby. They hate a cheat. Um, like most I think it's too early. They can't say like to come during the day. His name is Chester though. I don't see anymore. The oh no, there she is. Hey, right there. Just how slender their bodies are. Yeah. It's one of the factors that helps them run so quickly. Oh. There he goes. There he goes. Look at him. Oh, he's a little animal. They coming out. That's what I'm talking about. Come on out, Adam. Show, show you something. They was looking at him. They was looking at him. Yeah. Oh yeah, they were. Hey, look at the people. They say, look at the people. They coming to. We're up left against the forest rock. It's called a Kobe rock. It's a popular spot for a lot of animals. Oh, on the savannah to go hang out on top of. It's a good place to get some sun, but more importantly, yeah, it's a good place to look for any prey or predator. Whether the animal is trying to get away or trying to look for some food, it's a good spot to stop by. Some more rhino. That one's bigger. Oh. It looks like up ahead on the right. We'll see a few more of our white rhinos up there. And there's huge. another one in the back. Yeah, that's, that's a huge one. Right then we have those white antelope. Yeah. And those big horns. Those are the scimitar horned oryx. Yeah. And we have that little brown antelope there by himself. That is our Bontabok. Uh, our Bontabok yeah. is named Sebastian. Uh, Bontaboks were hunted close to extinction in the early 20th century. 
and at one point there were only 17 left in the world. Uh, luckily, a local farmer in Africa was able to take the 17 remaining Bontabak in the world and keep them safe on his protected land. Now, 100 years later, there are close to 3,000 Bontabak left in the world, so we're very lucky, very happy to have Sebastian out here on the reserve with us. Now, over on the left, we're going to want to keep our eyes open for any warthogs. Those large holes there, those are warthog burrows. Boom, but there they go, right there. There they go, they laying down, right there. They laying down. They not Let's see if we can get a better look once we circle around. Out here we have a few more of our white rhinos. Get a good idea of just how large they are. Are they back in? The white rhinos have really poor eyesight, so they rely mostly on hearing to know their surroundings. That's why you'll see them flipping their ears around every now and then. Now, over the years, there have been several conservation projects that have been started here at Animal Kingdom. One of the most successful was the reintroduction of white rhinos to the wild of Uganda. Now, there hadn't been any wild rhinos there since 1982, and in 2006, they took two of our white rhinos from here, Animal Kingdom, sent them over to Uganda. And they were actually able to begin reproducing in the wild out there again. So that's one of the amazing success stories of animal conservation projects that started right here at Animal Kingdom. Now our last stop out here on the reserve is going to be the Warden's Post. Now they've been trying to do their part in animal conservation and taking care of some very special little animals here. I'll get a good look at them on the left hand side. They climb out on top of the table. <laughs> now these little guys are the Nigerian pork boots. They look like cute little babies, but they are full grown adults. Now they love playing and they love being social. They also have a great sense of balance, so they some exceptional climbers. Now we're almost back to the village. Oh, it's almost our time to part ways, but first I just want to say thank you guys for coming out on the reserve with me today. Uh, it was always fun to drive around, see which animals are out and about. I think we had pretty good luck, got to see a lot of really cool animals. I hope you guys had fun, I hope you learned something new as well. And if there's anything I want you to take away from the safari, it's about the importance of animal conservation. And how we can all make a difference just through our everyday life choices and trying to choose options that are beneficial for our fellow humans, the environment, and the animals that we share this planet with. Now if you want to see some more animals today, I recommend checking out Gorilla Falls. That's about a 15 to 20 minute self-guided walking tour. That's here in Africa. There you can see some silverback gorillas, naked mole rats, Copies, hippos, and you can also see my favorites, the meerkats. They are so cute. All right, we have reached the end of our tour. We are come back a little bit later. We're almost at our dock. 